What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It is the August 9th edition, if you will, of the Sam's Report. I hope you had a wonderful week. I did. And we are wrapping up, uh, well, sort of summer, right? School starting up for people. And uh, I'm looking forward to that so that my family gets back onto a normal routine. As summer is a little hectic. But speaking of hectic, a lot of things going on in the news this week. And let's just dive in. One of the interesting things that has been happening on the phone side from the Google camp is the Pixel 4. Now, we, we've been seeing the Pixel 4, and the interesting thing, at least to me, is the marketing strategy that Google has taken. Uh, previously, when specific features have leaked about the upcoming device, Google, a few days later, will come out and say, ta-da, yeah, here it is. Actually, we're announcing this right now, and here's what we're doing with the phone. Now, this week, uh, the Pixel 4 is said to have a 90 hertz a 90 hertz display with a DSLR attachment for the camera on the back. This was leaked out. Uh, if we're setting a course, what Google has done previously, I would expect them to confirm that here in the near future if it is accurate. And I will tell you that a 90 hertz display will be quite nice. If you have not ever used a higher refresh rate than 60 hertz, once you get into that 90 hertz or 120 hertz, it's quite nice. So that will be a nice feature for uh, for the Pixel 4. I hope that Apple finally does that on their iPhones. Um, they have done it on their iPad Pro, so they clearly know that this is something that is nice and desirable, and hopefully maybe we'll see it this year on the upcoming iPhones. So we will see if we're doing that. Uh, also speaking of Google, they are now including podcast in search results, which I guess is good for people like me who do podcasts. Although it's going to be interesting to see how they do it because uh, oftentimes the content you're looking for is nested inside of a podcast. I'm assuming that they're going to be able to give you a timestamp or rough timestamp of when that content is discussed because some podcasts are over an hour long. We will see how that comes up. It'll also be interesting to see where and how they include this because if you've ever done a search for Google on mobile, it's a little messy, right? There's a lot of things that are other than just search results showing up. Not always bad, but I'll be curious to see what is happening and how they actually roll that feature out. I can't imagine it's going to be a bad thing. It's just going to be a as with many things, it comes down to execution, if you will. Um, other things outside of Google happening this week, Microsoft has announced that the MSDN magazine is shutting down, that its last run will be in November, and that has been a 19-year publication coming out of the Microsoft camp, coming to an end, and uh, it'll be sad to see that go. I bet 19-year-old publication is possibly older than some people listening to this podcast. So uh, other things going on with Microsoft, they re they're they doing some interesting, and by interesting I mean odd, and by odd I mean whatever, things with the Windows builds lately. So if you are on the slow ring, which is 19H2 builds, which are coming out here in a few weeks or months, depending on when they actually do ship it, they are, so you have the slow ring, and now there's basically two rings inside the slow ring because they're shipping different builds to different people inside the slow ring to beta test things, but it's awkward. Um, so depending on which ring you are, you are getting 18362.10012 or .10013. And they all have the same features, just some are turned on, some are turned off, so it's kind of an A-B testing type thing. And um, yeah, so you can kind of take a gander at what you might be getting there, there's not a whole lot different, candidly. The one feature that I am excited or whatever most notable, especially for somebody like me, is that you have the ability to manage notifications at the top of the action center that will make it easier to manage all that crap that ends up in there. As somebody who basically turns off action center on every single device that he uses, this is this is good because it makes it easier to control that stuff because I, I if I open action center, it's usually on accident the only place i do it frequently which ironically is not up there my service book 2 is usually there i usually use the action center to cast to that display but that is about it i never use it on a desktop and i i really don't like pop-up notifications uh, on any device for that matter so uh, turning them off is um i don't know if that's always what i do but the big news of the week this week folks is happening between Samsung and Microsoft. If you aren't aware, uh, Samsung this week launched the Note 10, their premier kind of productivity-based phone. It comes with the stylus or S Pen, if you will. And it's got some fancy new wand features, makes you look like Harry Potter or potentially a Jedi, depending on how you, how you want to swing that thing. But what's interesting about here is what they announced with Microsoft. Samsung and Microsoft announced a partnership where they're going to be working a lot closer together. And we're starting to see that with this device. And actually, Satya Nadella came out on stage 
While he didn't really announce anything, he was there basically just to solidify that the partnership is real, and if you want to do that, you bring your CEOs up on stage together, which is exactly what they did. He said some fluffy stuff and then walked off. He's on stage for a minute or two. Aside from that, what they announced is that the Samsung Note is the first Samsung device that basically has your phone built in. Now, not your phone, like your, your phone. It's an app in Windows 10 that allows you to access your phone. And what they showed off is actually pretty neat. And now this isn't all exclusive to the Samsung Note 10. It's just the way that the integration occurs is a little bit better and it's a little more fast and fluid if you remember that terminology from the IE days. Uh, it, it's just a little bit better and a little bit more seamless. And what they're trying to do here is bridge the gap between Android and Windows. And if you go back and watch the announcement from Samsung, count how many times they say Android. It's not very, I, I think it honestly might be zero. If it's not zero, it's very, very small. They weren't talking about it in great detail, mostly because Samsung and Microsoft have one thing, well, they have multiple things in common, but they have one major thing in common. Neither one of them have a successful mobile operating system. Yes, Microsoft had Windows Mobile. Yes, Samsung has Tizen or whatever, you, however you call it but neither of them have anything close to the popularity of Android. So what are these companies doing? They're joining forces, and I think this is the closest we will ever see to a true Surface phone, because if you think about it, what could Microsoft make in the mobile segment that is better than a Note 10? A Note 10 has things that Microsoft loved. It has inking support with a pen, it has the productivity type stuff that's built in with all that good stuff. Um, basically, the Note 10 is the best of the mobile world from a productivity perspective. And what does Microsoft love? Productivity. And candidly, I don't think Microsoft could make a better phone than the Note 10, right? Samsung has a long, rich history of building super premium Android devices. That's how they that's how they climb to the top of the basically the Android pecking totem pole is with their Galaxy line of devices. Can Microsoft beat something that looks better and operates better than the Note 10? I realistically don't think so, and I don't think it's worth their money. We all know the story behind what is mobile, not gonna drill that in. So what makes sense? Microsoft pairs up with them, and they, Microsoft starts pitching the Note 10 as the preferred companion to Windows 10. And on the Android side, uh, Samsung is now including Outlook, the email client, as the default email app. And I believe there's gonna be some other email, or not email, uh, productivity Microsoft apps launching on the Samsung device, just kind of out of the box experience. So what does it get here? Microsoft gets access to a larger mobile ecosystem. Samsung gets better integration into Windows 10. Both companies are gonna be pitching this product as the premier solution for productivity or a Microsoft companion device. Both companies win, and I think it's a really smart move. And that is why I don't think we will ever see a true Surface phone because I can't imagine Microsoft inking this partnership in the behind the scenes going, ah, oh, we're gonna build our own phone here and then just screw over Samsung. That would not sit well with Samsung at all. And I, candidly, I really don't think Microsoft could build a better phone than the Note 10. I, I really don't. Maybe some better camera, maybe, but I don't even know if they could do better cameras. So uh, there you go. If you're looking for a Surface phone, go buy the Note 10. That is going to be the best embodiment of what a Surface phone would have been. Now, I'm not saying that Microsoft won't build small form factor LTE capable or 5G capable devices. I believe that they may still explore that, but it's going to be much more in the tablet arena, such as like a Surface Go, if you will, um, and all that good stuff. So uh, the Note 10, what's interesting about it is is this the start of something bigger, right? My, obviously, Microsoft is working with Samsung here, but you'd have to imagine that other players in the industry probably want that integration as well. Because if you saw on stage the demo of the, the your phone stuff, I mean, it's really, really good. It's not quite as good yet as what you get on an Apple device um, between Mac OS and iPhone. Not too surprising there. One, this is iteration one. Two, it's much easier when you own the entire ecosystem. That being said, it was pretty dang good. It was pretty dang good, and I think they are making the right steps. The question becomes, are they going to do this with other manufacturers? There's a lot of um, OEM, Android manufacturers out there. LG is a big one. You've got, obviously, you've got Google, but I can't imagine they're going to do this with Google. And you've got many other players. Are they going to get the same treatment as Samsung? I don't know. I, I don't know if that is actually going to happen. We will have to wait and see. But it is pretty neat that soon you'll be able to answer phone calls on your Windows 10 PC from your Samsung device without actually having to answer, pick it up on your phone. It's, it's a great feature. It's a really good feature and it's good for Windows. It's good for Samsung. It's good for, I think, all the users as well. So we will see. Uh, something else that Samsung announced. They announced a new Windows 10 laptop with the Snapdragon 8CX. Now, I think we're gonna to start to see a lot more of this stuff coming out. They're promising like 23 hours of battery life, crazy, 
crazy battery life. Obviously, LTE is built in. It is running Windows 10 in S mode, which I imagine most people will try to break out of S mode. Um, but I also think we're going to start seeing a lot more 8CX devices. We have uh, IFA coming up here in the next few weeks, and I think that is where we will start to see these products start to materialize and ready for the holiday shopping season. I am super intrigued by that. I honestly hope that the next gen Surface Go, which by the way, I did a video earlier this week. Um, this thing's a year old. I hope the next gen Surface Go has an 8CX. I think that would make a lot of sense, although it might be a larger brother, potentially. We will see. We will see what is coming down there because I, I'm i really intrigued by the 8CX. I, I really am. If you haven't seen any of the other videos, I'm, I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Maybe we'll do another video or something. Who knows? Who cares? Um, other things happening in the gaming world. Uh, Microsoft obviously announced the Gears 5 uh, Xbox edition with two controllers. Um, Phil Spencer also crucially confirmed, because people get really tied up about this, that Microsoft is like abandoning um, the single player games with their Xbox Game Studio acquisitions. And Phil came out very clearly on Twitter replying to a comment that says, hey, uh, we are definitely building first player games. Not everything is going to be solely focused on uh, multiplayer like style games. There's definitely single player games coming from the Xbox Game Studio acquisitions that they have made over the past couple years. So everybody can lower their pitchforks and just know that. Um, other interesting things in the gaming world, Ninja, who Microsoft signed up for Mixer with an exclusivity agreement, has over 1 million subscribers already. And as of the time of the posting, 1.3 million followers. So now keep in mind, Microsoft is giving away subscriptions to um, Ninja through, I believe, the end of September. So while it is important that he has a million subscribers, that means a lot of his users from Twitch have followed him over. It doesn't necessarily mean he truly has organic uh, one million subscribers because I think it's like seven bucks a month, five, six, seven bucks a month, something like that to subscribe. But Microsoft is giving those away for free until the end of September. But the 1.3 million followers are probably a closer true recognition of how many people have come from Twitch over to Mixer which for Microsoft, that, that is clearly their largest uh, streamer on the platform. Maybe that's going to work. Maybe we're going to see more of this. So that's that's a quick wrap-up of what's going on, guys. Lots of questions this week. Let me refresh the thread, which I always throw up on uh, Threat. If you're following me on Twitter, I always tweet that out, usually on a Thursday. And if you ever have questions, that is the easiest place because I, I love all the questions that come in on Twitter and I try to answer them. But when I'm doing a podcast like this, it's very hard to try to go to Twitter or to to throt to instagram to all the different places um so i just i focus on the throt thread anyways drunken gelt says with the samsung partnership going on do you think we will see other companies doing the same also with skype being with skype being removed for business will we see the slow death of the service that is getting bundled into another software okay so two questions there i i would be surprised if we don't see more partnerships with Microsoft and Android vendors. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, of course, we don't know fully know what their deal is with Samsung. We, we don't know, but Microsoft currently, I believe, sells Razer phones also in the Microsoft store. And so I would imagine that there might be more. We just don't know the, the, if there's actually like money exchanging hands here. That would feel a little odd. But at the same time, Microsoft needs the Android world to kind of shift to supporting Windows. And so I could see them doing that. We just don't know quite yet. And with Skype being removed from business, uh, will we see the slow death of the service? I don't know if we will see the slow... Maybe we'll see the slow death. The thing is, Skype has a lot of brand recognition in the consumer world. So I would, I would hesitate to think that they're just going to totally kill it off. Now, Skype in the business world never really... It had the same recognition but only kind of tangibly. Right now, Teams is the new hotness. And I do wonder if Microsoft is going to draw a line and say Skype is a consumer service, Teams is an enterprise service. Although we have keep hearing this rumor about Teams for Life coming uh, later this year. And so it'll be interesting to see how Skype fits into that. Andreas says, or Andreas says, uh, after the announcement regarding the partnership with Samsung and all the talk about mobility, Windows 10 on ARM and new expansive devices, do you think this could mean that Samsung could be the first to show Pegasus or even a Centaurus device running light OS in the near, near future? Maybe even a phone that runs light OS with Android apps docked in a big screen. Uh, because they both really do great, make great hardware, but a lack of a mobile S and Samsung's new tablet and or Surface Go 2 could really benefit from a fresh OS instead of Android with Windows 10. You're not, it's not a crazy thought. Although when it comes to light OS, I, I realistically think Microsoft needs to lead by example. They've already tried this before with the Surface RTA. Uh, they tried it with the Windows 10 S and the Surface laptop. And so when they launch a new S, especially because the other two haven't fared very well, I 
it would surprise me to see another vendor introduce it. Now, what they might do is announce it on their own hardware and then have other supporting devices from the likes of HP and Samsung and Acer and Lenovo also running the hard or running the OS. That is typically how Microsoft likes to introduce this stuff to say, hey, here's our devices at X price point, And here's a suite of other pieces of hardware that have uh, different forms and functions at a lower or a different price point as my, my, uh, is how Microsoft has typically introduced that kind of stuff. So that is how I would expect them to do it if history is a predictor of the future. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but I, I can't see Microsoft making a brand new OS announcement at another vendor's event. They definitely are going to be holding their own event for that kind of thing. Mr. PKI says, is the Surface Go ever going to drop in price to make it attractive to low-end travel device alternative? And then an, a mold, an old Amiga user says, and as a follow-up, uh, is it likely they will refresh the Surface Go with a faster chip SSD and smaller bezels than at the current price? The entry-level Surface Pro is priced very near the Go. He's not wrong there. Uh, but the smaller size of the Go is preferable for traveling light. So what they're referring to here is the Surface Go. Still costs the same amount of money as it did when it launched over a year ago. This iteration, I believe, is the 8 gig uh, Pentium Gold version, although they all have the same Pentium Gold processor, but it has 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage. $549 without the type cover. E. That is, that is a lot of money today for this device a year after it launched. This device with a type cover at 400 bucks. I would be, I would jump all over that. But as it stands right now, you're looking at 549, roughly 100 bucks more, um, 649-ish uh, for this. That's that's a lot. You get a lot of iPad for that kind of money, which is what this thing is up basically going up against. And is it a better device than an iPad? It's not. It, it, it's really not. 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 It's not. Sorry. Um, you can do different things, but at the price point, after a year, it needs to be cut. Now. I hope that they are going to refresh this thing because I love this form factor. Like this size is wonderful. Like in my review, I was talking about how you can just throw this thing in a bag and honestly forget that it's there. And if they tossed an, uh, an arm chip in here with LTE out of the box, it would be a wonderful travel companion as an old Amiga user suggests or Mr. PKI suggests. And so I hope that they're going to drop the price. But, or, or at least refresh it, something. I don't want them to give this up. They did sell, I believe, a fair amount of these. They, they landed a big contract um, with, I believe it was LSAT, and I had heard the number was around 40,000 of these things for, if you're going to be taking the LSAT, you might be seeing these things uh, over the next couple of years. So, uh, Dad, or David Travis says, Hey Brad, I was wondering why you are moving from Apple Music to Spotify when it will work with the Apple Watch. We use Apple Music Family Plan now. And I'm wondering if I'm missing a reason I should change. By the way, the parental controls are very important in our family. So I have one of the primary reasons why I'm staying with, I've used Spotify for years, 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 years. And I have a lot of bunch of playlists and that aside, because those can all be rebuilt. Um, the biggest reason why I'm using Spotify, and I should maybe check to see if Apple Music does this, is that it integrates very, very well with Sonos and uh, the Amazon device, which I don't want to say here. I don't want to. Well, with this thing, with the, the Amazon Echo, um, it integrates really well. I can scream at this thing and then it plays over all the speakers. And that is why I use it. That is the primary reason. Um, my wife and I share an account currently and it works fine. My daughter does not currently have an account. So the family controls aren't quite there yet for as a need for us. Um, I would have, I know that it eventually will become an issue, but at this time, the family controls are not a priority. So for me, the priorities are Good integration with Sonos, which Spotify does. Um, good integration with Apple CarPlay, which it does. And then good integration with this, which it does. So that it, it right now, Spotify fills the needs for what we currently use in our house. Um, that is the primary reason, minus the fact that it doesn't work on the Apple LTE watch yet. But once that kickover occurs, which should happen with Watch OS 6, which should come out sometime late next month, uh, and I'm hoping Spotify launches on day one, then I will stop paying for Apple Music. Uh, Marique Marok says, uh, it seems the trend in laptops is to go thinner and lighter at all costs. Do you have any feeling for why this is? I Yeah, I know a pretty good reason why. Uh, to me, thinness and weight improvements have rapidly dim diminishing returns. Totally agree, especially with thermals, keyboard quality of battery, or quality and battery size are sacrificed. Maybe I'm just in the minority of this. They're... So it started with Apple, right? They came out with, what was it, the MacBook Air, and they brought it out in the manila envelope. They made that big splash because it was kind of the first 
ultra thin light in mobile PC. And then the obsession with guy got like, we got to make it thinner, thinner, thinner. We see this in smartphones too, right? It's got to be thin because thin means premium. Well, yeah, we, there's definitely a point where too thin becomes flimsy uh, and you sacrifice and Apple's been bitten by this bug pretty bad because they redesigned their keyboards, remember, to make their MacBook Pro even thinner and everyone hated it and now they have a massive recall and that keyboard has just been a complete flop. I am very much of the opinion that at, at some point it doesn't make sense to make it any thinner, right? Keep it this, I would say keep it the same size as just a, a type A USB port, which I don't have one right here. This one has type C, but I want, I fret that they're going to try to make it as thin as a type C port. Battery life to me is more important, right? I don't care how thin and flashy it is. If it bends in my backpack and I only get six hours of battery life, double the thickness, give me true 24 hours where I don't feel like I have to be tethered to a wall. I will take that any day over the thin and light uh, trend that we are seeing, um, right? Once it's below like two and a half pounds, the difference between two and a half pounds and one and a half pounds is not that big of a deal. The difference between like two and a half and six pounds, like the old laptops, that's a big deal. But once you get around that mark, are you really like if you can't carry an extra pound, um, maybe maybe it's, you shouldn't be carrying it at all. Uh, Will says, hey, Brad, I'm not sure how to up how update you are on the Surface Hub lines, which the 2S is starting to ship. By the way, I've seen a lot of people tweeting out pictures that they've gotten these things. I wanted to find out if the Gen 1 version of the Hub will be getting the same software as the Surface Hub 2S. Microsoft mentioned they were working to update the first generation hubs, and I wanted to see if you knew when that might be happening. I need to look into this. I can't... I can't I, so I know for a fact that the first gen hubs will not get the 2x software remember the 2x is the one that turns i don't know i believe if i recall correctly they said some of the features from the surface hub 2 line would make it to the original surface hub but i don't believe all of them are going to make it because there's certain features that are hardware built in with the cameras and some of the micro rays that are not present in the first service hub that makes it not possible to transport all of that stuff. So I believe you are going to get a Surface Hub update on the software, but I don't believe it's going to be um, an exact replica of the 2S. I need to fully look into that, but that what I just said, I'm pretty sure is close to being um, spot on. So uh, Eric K says, uh, Brad, do you have any programming in your career or have you, or even on your own? And if so, what language did you use or like to use? So yeah. Uh, when I was in high school, yeah, high school, I took, I believe it was a year, a school year, or it was at least a half year of C++ and to like basically complete the program. Um, I was a computer nerd, not, shouldn't be any big surprise there. Uh, I actually did it as an independent study because my high school didn't offer it. So I basically sat in an AP math class. I had a, I, I had the math class. And then when I was done, I just went and sat in the corner with a computer and to, it was a pass fail type course. And mm -hmm the requirement was that by the end of it you had to build i believe it was tic-tac-toe it was some game i'm pretty sure it was tic-tac-toe that was if you built that and it worked then you passed and if you didn't then you failed um, or you had to do whatever and so yeah i took c plus um, plus i've also screwed around with javascript a bit i think everybody's touched html at some point i'm a really terrible programmer but i do play around with it um i'm pretty good at editing scripts and that kind of stuff like as on an as needed basis but if you gave me uh, if i opened up visual studio and you said make tic-tac-toe again i'd probably struggle quite a bit uh dashi says after your comments earlier this week are you about your experience using a Surface Go as a pure tablet. I was wondering if you thought if there was any pro prospect of Microsoft actually taking tablet mode seriously and making the touch interface better. I know we all were meant to hate Windows 8 for running the desktop experience, but I can't help but notice that the tablet, tablet OS is vastly superior to the 10, despite having a fully separated dedicated mode in the system. Fully agree. The The tablet experience on Windows 8 was is better than what is what is on Windows 10 today. Windows 10 supports touch natively and it's on a lot of devices and it works, but is definitely not the primary focus of the OS like it was with Windows 8. With Windows 8, they were trying to build a true hybrid OS that had a touch environment and a mouse and keyboard environment. Windows 10 is a mouse and keyboard environment that also conveniently supports touch. Are they gonna go back and really overhaul Windows 10 to make it touch like, like they did with Windows 8? I honestly don't think so because Microsoft sees the future of Windows 10. It's as a desktop PC with touch support on tablet and mobile devices, but it's not, a, it's not ever gonna be a true iPad OS. It's not, and Microsoft has 
um, played those cards. They didn't work out. Although I don't think trying again would be a terrible thing because of how poorly Windows 8 was received because they tried to do too much too little. Anyways, um, the next chance that we might see some of this touch improvement and tablet experience would be Lite OS because that is going to be designed for mobile devices and that would be the place that I would expect to see a refined touch experience come to play. Is that going to happen? We don't quite know yet. Uh, Brother Nod says, so at the Samsung events, they announced a nifty ARM laptop and they claim it is nearly as fast as an i5. Now, keep in mind what i5 they are referring to. I believe it's a U series. So it's not, it's definitely not a desktop i5. Just keep that in mind. And I bet the GPU is way closer to an iPad than your Surface Pro. Probably not too wrong there. And it's instant on. The Galaxy Note 10 offers near instant note taking with the screen off. Blah, 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 all the good stuff. Uh, long story short, he says, is there any hope of Microsoft releasing a Surface with zero lag for a note-taking experience? The delay from picking up my Surface Pro 5 to writing things down really ruins my attempt to replace paper with it. At one point, they were playing around with this, and it was the Surface Mini. Um, you were able to, if I believe, double tap the eraser on the pen. I don't have any pens near me. And it would actually launch one note, I believe, above the lock screen experience. I don't know why they got away from that. I don't know if that was, again, a, a demise from Windows 8, but you definitely could launch that experience much faster than you can today. I hope Microsoft goes back towards that. As of right now, you still gotta log in and do all that good stuff. It's definitely not just something like you can go like this, double tap the pen and start writing, but that is not, um, there you go. You can see all the lights and everything shining on my pretty face there. So as of right now, I don't know of anything that they're doing along those lines, which is unfortunate because you were absolutely right. At one point, we did have a better, um, we better did have a better note-taking experience, which is odd for Microsoft. Anyways, all right, folks, that wraps it up for today. As always, very much appreciate all the questions. It's a favorite part of the week, every week, all the time. And I hope you had a wonderful week in August, and we'll catch all of you right back here next time.